Hey, it's me, Lucas Ross, CFA, CPA, and Realtor. I live in Seattle, Washington, an area that has had earthquakes and will have earthquakes in the future. I live in a two-level home. There's a basement with a one level uh, above it. And uh, the danger of being in an earthquake zone is that during an earthquake, the framing of your home might slip off the foundation. If that happens, your house is a complete loss, cannot be repaired, must be demolished and rebuilt from the ground up. So that eventuality is protected by earthquake insurance, but that is separate from a typical homeowner's insurance policy. So it must be purchased separately at an additional cost. So I'm gonna walk you through in this video my calculations of if I should buy earthquake insurance and then also should I do an earthquake retrofit of my home? Because my home was built uh, in 1971, which was before uh, some of the more modern, you know, building code measures would have required uh, for, for protection of earthquakes. So the first question that I think people should ask whenever you're purchasing insurance is like, would the, the bad case scenario ruin me? Okay. If, if you uh, can afford to lose your home, for instance, like let's say the home you live in, you know, slides off the foundation in an earthquake, but you have other resources and things like that, then you're going to do a cost benefit analysis, right? That's going to be more dollars and cents. So if it's no, then do the calculations and the calculations will tell you if you should buy insurance. If, if yes, and you can afford the insurance, then, then buy it. So what I mean is that if you lost your home and you just, you'd have nowhere to go, you'd be homeless, uh, you have no other resources, then as long as you can afford the insurance, then you really do need the insurance, in my opinion, because you don't want that one event to just completely ruin your life. Okay. So, right. So since this is a pretty short thing, we can't, we don't really need to explore that anymore. If you, if you really, really need your home, then you should buy insurance if you can afford it. <laughs> and if you can't afford it, then do everything you can to afford it. <clears throat> okay. So for my, for my scenario, I'm more in that second boat, whereas like my house isn't my only real estate holding uh, or my only resource and things like that. So here's, here's what we're going to do. So my house, the value of it is about 700,000. My debt on it is around 550. So my equity in the house is 150,000. Okay. So the first lesson of today is that when you're, when I'm buying insurance to protect my home, I'm not insuring this amount, right? I'm not saving myself a $700,000 if I save my house. I'm saving myself my equity, right? And in fact, um, the equity um, is a little bit less than that because even though I have $150,000 tied up in the house, if I was to sell it right now, I wouldn't get $150,000 because there's excise tax, there's commissions, title, escrow, et cetera, right? So my, my actual money that's tied up in the house that I could get out if I needed is more like $100,000, okay? So this is the number that I use if I'm trying to try, trying to understand like, okay, how much am I protecting when I buy earthquake insurance or when I retrofit my home, right? It's more like a hundred thousand in my opinion. All right. So the, the premium for my house as is right now is $900 per year. I think that's actually pretty affordable for earthquake insurance, considering that you get a lot of coverage for that $900. Uh, so the coverage that you would receive is they estimated the cost to rebuild would be $440,000. So that's the amount that's insured. There's a 5% deductible, which is 20, hopefully I'm not doing this math wrong, but it's $22,000 deductible. And so I would pay 22,000 and then the insurance company would chip in 418,000. All right, so the way it works is playing out this scenario, right? The earthquake hits. My house slides off the foundation, okay? A couple of things go through my mind. One is that this is going to happen to lots of people, okay? Lots of people are going to have the exact same problem as me because most people don't purchase earthquake insurance, and there's many, many old houses in the Seattle area. So lots of houses are going to go down, okay? So at that point... I'm like in a disaster zone. Okay. Rebuilding 
takes time and costs are going to be higher. Okay. So yeah, if, if I wanted to rebuild my house right now where there's no disaster, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit more, but it's about 2000 square feet, right? If I wanted to rebuild my house right now, just the construction costs would be around $225 per square foot. Um, which is doable, but if I do a bad job, if I mismanage it, if I'm not very good, if you know somebody's not that honest with me, that could balloon way, way higher, right? But $225 would be like a good price per square foot for me to achieve. Guess what? That's 450,000 bucks to rebuild. I'm not even insured for that much, right? So I'm already coming out of my pocket more than the deductible in on a good day in like a normal <clears throat> construction market. Well, if there's like a, a thousands of, of uh, de- uh, what's the word, houses that have been, can't think of the word, uh, ruined and can't, can't be uh, lived in anymore, then guess what? Those costs go way higher. Suddenly, instead of $225, maybe it's $325. Or maybe it's just not even possible because there's so many disasters, so many houses that nobody can do it. Well, if it's $325 a square foot, then that's Six hundred fifty thousand dollars. So suddenly, like I'm coming out of pocket two hundred thousand to just to rebuild the house using the insurance. That's way more than I have tied up in the house right now, anyways. Okay. So, anyways, nine hundred dollars uh, per year. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think that's a very reasonable amount. However, for me to protect a hundred thousand dollars and then have a five percent deductible and only have four hundred forty thousand dollars of coverage. And we couldn't even get that raised anyway. I talked to them. We couldn't even get that raised because they're like, no, no, no. It doesn't cost that much to build. It doesn't cost that much to build. Yes, it does. I live in Seattle and I deal with new construction and it's not very cheap to build in Seattle. So I feel like they use numbers that are not correct. So anyways, be- for these reasons, I'm not going to even spend the $900 per year to purchase earthquake insurance. Okay. Now, just, just to round out some knowledge real quick, uh, the retrofit um, is, is, is a more viable option. So I got a, I got one bid so far for 15,000 bucks, uh, to retrofit the basement of my home, which, which involves, you know, cutting drywall, uh, building some shear walls, and then, uh, tying down the, the framing to the, um, to the foundation of the home. And so that, that isn't like full. I mean, if there's a giant, giant earthquake, I, there's still a risk that your home would, would get, uh, ruined. But that would protect you from, you know, that would make you a- as good as you can be, really. $50,000, that's a pretty high high cost. However, that's something that I feel is a value to the home that stays with the home. It's not just like an annual cost, like earthquake insurance. And so this is actually more what I would be uh, steered toward if I was inter- interested in protecting my home from, from earthquake. LucasRoth.com is my website. Hope this made sense. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.